shows that Alt is talking about being kind to Kuro. Uh, Anime Impulse is doing extreme meet and greet type of promotion for Niti Sanji. Mika or Kamigu is talking about her mental health and a attempt that she went through in the past and how she's better now. That and so much more on this VTuber segment. This person here is known to have bullied or dogpiled on Zion when the whole thing happened with her, with her termination, and right now seems to be kind of trying to protect Kuro. I, I'm not quite sure if that's a great idea because Kuro right now is not really doing the best for his own PR. Um, yeah, there's stress. Stress can be a big thing in a lot of stuff going on, but I honestly do not attribute those things to stress. I attribute it to him just not being good at PR and kind of being an Esther, like he wants to stir stuff up. Uh, maybe, I don't know if it's to drum up stuff or if the fact that he just doesn't have a filter, that could be another thing. There's some people that just don't have a filter. Either way, he did something wrong and he hasn't apologized for it in the sense of dogpiling on a smaller VTuber and a VTuber who just misunderstood the situation and he took it as them being a drama baiter or a drama farmer, uh, which the person who had it done to them is not a drama farmer. They're just someone who does videos on the internet. And just, you know, is popular enough to maybe have been seen by Kuro because of the reach. You know, so that was a bad thing on Kuro's end. But this person says people change narratives so quickly when they're spiteful or trying to inflict harm. Kuro's been through enough S. So many of us have taken effing hike. This is a person defending somebody when some a former talent, Zion, or Sayu, is not, she's known now, had issues with Nidhi Sanji. And Nidhi Sanji wasn't treating her well. And look, and he was really mean to her at that time. So maybe then make a... a, a gosh darn apology video and do what you preach to Sayu. Do what you say and quit trying to act like all of a sudden you all have the moral high ground. We all know there's a high chance that the company has a ton of high profile mental issues. Uh, the mental issues going on behind the scenes with various talents. Instead of acting like we gotta suddenly be nice to a VTuber who's known for incendiary comments, read the darn room. The larger VTuber community has accused Kuro's behavior numerous times between the current and past life. This person saying, I'm actually in awe of how much Kuro is so creative as a content creator. But the minute he opens his mouth, he speaks blindly and he almost manages to light himself on fire every single time. Kuro's funny and likable because he's dumb. He's also unlikable for the same reason. I don't have a dog in this fight. I just think it's funny that little B is whining about leaving people alone. Again, when many have contributed to one of their two, one of the two people's attempts. Um, of course he did. The guy condemns Zion for mistakes he, he himself makes. Doesn't apologize, but he, instead he whines and he just goes on his PL. He condemns Zion publicly. He should apologize publicly. Oh, it, it, the thing is, you know, Mr. Condemns Zion publicly, I believe. That's what they're saying. It's not something negative to apologize. It's Hex's F up, so he should take responsibility for it. Uh, honestly, this is why NGN probably doesn't let their livers use their PLs much, if ever, if they are within the Niji Sanji EN, because even NGN is aware they're hiring talents for the talent and not for the IRL personalities. So yeah. It's basically, you, you're going to get probably un, unstable people or people who uh, aren't in the PR, you know, side of things. And because a lot of times when you're an indie, you don't have to worry about PR. You just say what you want to say. And it's, honestly, that Edgelord should practice what he preaches. I mean, he has no right to talk. He pretty much did the same as, as Kuro. I don't even think Kuro was being malicious here. Negligent, 100%, but not malicious. Hex is one of the more underhated people in the Desandi story. Three instances of hypocrisy in three months is a trend. While you can argue any color forced the black streamers to comment, Hex was the only one to comment and both support smear campaigns. He knew what his actions could do. He just remained unaffected by two people almost losing their lives. My correction, it wasn't Kuro who did anything to Zion. It was Hex who did the uh, criticized Zion. Pretty much Hex was the one who criticized Zion, not Mista or Kuro. Of course, Nidhi Sisters and Snowflakes will continue to censor this into the void because they know how Hex's actions are indefensible. So yeah, Kuro is just not being smart. Hex is the one that's actually being villainous. Guys, the Lulu coward. Also, why the heck's talking about Kuro? Why is he drama farming now? Kuro would hate him for that. So this person up here, I didn't know before, is Hex Haywire's uh, alt, or at least that's what I think they are assuming. They're assuming it is Hex Haywire's alt. So yeah, if he did these kinds of things before and uh, is crying to, you know, leave people alone, that is a BS thing and that is a kind of a scummy thing. So I'll just leave it at that. Here is a strange thing with uh, Anime Impulse. Anime Impulse is going to have Nidhi Sanji EN, of course, as they, I believe they usually have Nidhi Sanji at Anime Impulse. It's one of those that Nidhi Sanji is pretty much guaranteed to go in, just like Afkai was. But Afkai, you know, they had the whole issue uh, with Nidhi Sanji not wanting to be there or something like that. And they, you know, it fell during a time of also criticism to them. 
So Afkai is doing better by putting new newer talents and Vishojo and you know Hollow Live and such. Basically having another large group of people in there which will bring a lot more eyes to them. I believe Hollow Live will even bring more positive eyes versus Niji Sanji, but that's in a whole nother thing. Here we have the meet and greets where they originally put the the anime impulse. If you remember one of my videos, I put that they had uh, updated the amount of meet and greets to I believe three or uh, when it used to be the max of two tickets per meet and greet. Now it's three tickets per meet and greet. Basically, they want to sell it out. They want to see if they can sell it out because the whales who want to get two or three for each meet and greet will do that just to make sure Nidhi Sanji sells out. Uh, they are despite costing $35 or more. All of Hollow Stars, oh, Hollow Stars cost $35 more and all of Tempest meet and greets are sold out and only one Ian Liver is sold out right now. So here's all the Ian Livers. Only one is sold out, which is, uh, bring, uh, let's see, the Sunday, May 19th, Anime Impulse Seattle. Uh, for this one right now, it's Deputy Fulger's the only one that's sold out, it looks like. And when it comes to everything here, uh, Yuji Shinji sold out. Uh, the Arya Smart and the Guild Tempest is not sold out, but all the rest seem to be sold out. Like, Fleon is sold out. Uh, Haka is sold out. Um, Gavis Battle, Axel Sirius. Uh, Regis Altair is sold out. So since they, even if they're costing $35 more, they're more sold out, which means that they're more popular because the same amount of tickets were available for them as they are for Nidhi Sanji. So that does not, will not make the Nidhi Sanji Defense Forces very happy. So they're probably going to try to buy it out just for the sake of making it look the same. So instead of paying 100 for two minutes with the Nidhi Boys, you can now pay 150 for three minutes. Mind you, it's uh, $50 a ticket equals one minute. While Tempest Boys were $85 a ticket, but it's worth three minutes. Yeah, no thanks. That's probably what's going to end up happening. Uh, it's, you can get three tickets for three minutes. It's 150 bucks per ticket, 150 bucks for the three minute ticket. So, um, like I said, it's whales. They want to get whales in there. It says DJ's demand to sell high. Thank you, Parrot, for making me scream the word internally all the time. Sell, sell, sell. Are you smarter than Guild Tempest? But, bro, Shinri gonna have to carry this one. Popular demand. Yeah, sure. Popular demand by the investor because Kurosanji needs to make it before quarter four. That's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to pump up the numbers pretty much. Say, look at look at how well all of our stuff sold in, uh, you know, Anime Impulse and all these other places that we were at. Our people are very popular. And then, you know, get get the investors happier. Bandage Bringer, what, what's that their name? Two different livers, Vizelius Bandage and Vanco Bringer. Oh, okay. I'm glad Tempest is sold out. Those guys deserve all the love. I guess Noctix didn't do as well as expected. Yeah, they're they're just not doing so well. Um, it's expected right now with the way Nidhi Sanji En is really having a panic uh, situation where their uh, PR and goodwill is down the drain. It's not necessarily the livers' faults, but it is the organization that is running the livers that's at fault. So the livers are going to suffer, unfortunately. Send Kamigu some love right now. Uh, this person mentioned, you know, these type of ideations. Not going to lie, I felt so bad with actual hell. Past tense, because I'm better now. I think I've always wanted to say something about it, but I was always too scared of being seen as weak, unreasonable. But it was such an odd feeling, and this comic put it in such good terms. This one here, you know, it's talking about uh, ideations of wanting to do things, and you know how rubber bands can snap after uh, so many things uh, happen to you, and, um, you know, that type of stuff, scars, uh, things that you do. It's um, It can be very bad, very serious, and of course, if you ever have a need for just a break emotionally mentally etc take a break chill relax watch something you love watch something you enjoy and just take a bit of a break remember guys let's not speculate or use this as another reason to hate Nidhi Sanji this one is generally her venting from her heart that's all it is agreed she didn't even say what happened so it could have happened even before this let's not waste our time hating Niji when we could be sending her love instead exactly just send love don't assume it's you know Niji all the time it could be something that happened in her personal life. It could be something that happened after she left Niji. It could be something that happened before she was in Niji or something that she was going on uh, while she was in Niji, but, you know, with other stuff happening. So far, only Doki and Sai have confirmed that they have attempted blank, indirect response to Niji Sanji's actions. We are trying to make sure these people avoid taking such drastic actions, but we shouldn't just weaponize these actions against the company when they may be unrelated, someone who is actually thinking logically. Also be clear, unless I'm misinterpreting the post, she's not even saying she ever attempted, thankfully. Uh... Never mind, apparently she did make an attempt. Thankfully it failed. I guess that's pretty self-evident. The rest of the stuff, just not weaponizing it, still stands though. Glad she did. The original link, what she's quote retweeting. Only got into Mika after a graduation announcement, but she was by far the one I enjoyed watching the most. Here is what she is retweeting. It's this lead balloon thingy, which is saying, um, a few months ago I started talking about blank. For the longest time I thought of blank as an urge to congeal over months or years. But for me, it was stretched so far, it snapped just like that. And that's what she was talking about. It just snaps. And sometimes it just happens. Um, 
says, I, I felt it felt so sudden. I guess I didn't realize how bad it had gotten until myself looked up methods. It's such a shock at the time. I noticed mid click. Oh my goodness, this is real. But but knowing how I could do it, if I ever got to that point, became a fixation. Uh, it felt within reach. I had options. It felt tangible. I started thinking about it constantly. Is that black balloon that they're carrying with them? Everything I saw, I managed to bring back the idea. I just, and distraction seemed to feed back into that pit. So there was a lot of bad things happening there. Basically, you know, it's it's one of those things that uh, until you let it go, then then it's going to be bugging you the whole time. I wish I could say I'm fixed now. Good as new, but I can't even properly describe a conclusion I came to after reading the post. Just that it pushed me back from the edge. A post that they read that made them feel better. Uh, worst of all, I can't shake how comforting it was. The seductive sense of control, the relief. Um, there's no satisfying conclusion to this. It's not over yet. Maybe it never will be. But I'm not going to blank myself today. Hope that can count for something. So yeah, it does count for something when you no longer uh, feel the need to do something like that. Um, I wanted for months now was a sign that I was allowed to stay alive, that any of it, you know, basically was worth it. Um, revelation of the mess and kind of pride that it was still struggling through the inherent uh, gracelessness of being alive. I cried hard, so hard it made me realize I hadn't cried like this in years, but it was done. I was exhausted. Crash into the bed. Uh, basically, yeah, it was, you know, you deserve to live, basically. It's for me, but I kept going back to picking a scab. The post said the world was ending. I asked why it was still here and told me because it's the only thing worth doing, being here. So that kind of thing, that positive thing is what Kamiku is mentioning. And yes, we're going to keep it positive. And I'm glad she found a reason to stay. I'm glad that she found after, you know, she did make an attempt, but I'm glad that it didn't work. And after that, she found her reason to stay. Man, between all the failed attempts and all the levers going on mental breaks, there really needs to be more mental health support in general, just in general. So yes, please get mental health support if you need it. Please take a break if you need it. Please take care of yourself. Please. Yeah, I, I mean it from my heart. Take care of yourself. Make sure that you're fine. If not, talk to somebody. People out there care. Please. Uh, some more delusional people. I'm going to go over two that are doing stuff right now that is a little bit different from each other, but they're still both delusional. Nidhi Sanji lovers. Um, whoops, sorry, your butt internet, your bad internet and quality, dude. The performance was amazing. Sadly, it's not for some dumb people like you. Uh, glitches are often often happen in 3D models, and sometimes it looks like pixels because the models are so far away from the camera. No, it's pixels because it's pixels. It's pixelated because it is. Even old Hololive tech was not that bad, though. Even the Hololive EN small myth stream was still, uh, it was less scuffed. Uh, even their main branch isn't this bad. Yes, it's the consumer's fault that the content sucks. Smells like cope. It does. It's a it's a big amount of cope. This bl person blames us for the AR live bad quality. Dude, Nidhi Sanji has pre-recorded video, not us. I'm not sure Niji's sister is drooling from the excitement or due to the lack of intelligence. Uh, so Niji got one year to extra to fix it. Like they could have fixed the, the quality issues if they actually went and tried. If they were the former, report this to any color for DMCA takedown, which is basically a screenshots taken for the poster of the official account. Like you can report them to any color because of the fact any color doesn't want screenshots. So if you want to be malicious, you could do that. I w I'm not going to do that because I don't really care enough. I'm distracted that the mic isn't in the hand properly. Shoe's face is also scaring me away. I cannot describe. It's just, yeah, uh, the the mic is not in the hand properly. It just looks like it's going through the hand. So, yeah, we have things like that. And we have this other person here. So this is, it says, crazy how the graduated levers are still friends with the current ones. And the ones who are terminated are the ones stirring the pot. It's almost as if they were terminated for a reason. No, it's because they were maliciously terminated. Because they were terminated uh, for the wrong reasons. Because they were terminated in the wrong way that they are defending themselves because when you graduate, it's just basically you both on equal terms, try to, you know, go on and move your separate ways. But when there's a termination, especially a wrongful termination, you want to defend yourself. You want to make sure that your side is told. And that is what's happening right now. This person says this confounds me. Their two brain cells are really looping around trying to justify what happens in what way whatsoever did to lend stir the pot, defending yourself against Didi Sandy's termination letter, defending yourself against the black stream. And guess what? Now she doesn't talk about or insinuates anything. Like she stopped. Once they stopped going after her, she stopped going, you know, defending herself. Same thing with Zion and Sayu. Once she stopped getting attacked, that's when she stopped defending herself. Once people stopped asking, that's when she stopped defending herself. People ask she's going to defend herself. The first thing you have to see an ex live or stir the pot, except Kudo for being vague, which is not to be construed as intent on his part. Everyone reads differently into vague messages. But he's dancing around an NDA as well. That said, it's probably the best for you just to avoid the topics altogether, else the divided community will utilize his comments on both sides. Personally, I think it's hard NDA for Nidhi Sanji livers to talk about Niji, the primary catalyst for most issues. It leaves the community on both sides to speculate on the real happenings, and that's the thing that happens with NDAs. Crazy how Mint made fun of reference of Mint Phantom VTuber VT, YT, sounding like the name of someone who esters herself and chuckling at a tomato, or how Reimu and Doki's are friendless, or Rosami still having the same opening that features an unjustly terminated Selen, uh, forgot about Doki collabing with Usan. So yeah, there's a lot of people who 
who like each other even when they're terminated. Like, it, this person is, is sniffing copium too much. It's more funny that people haven't caught on to Petra's neck thing being a silent protest. As hilarious and awesome as that would be, it's like purely, like purely speculation, and it most likely it was a, uh, a issue with the, the live itself. No one told them about Yugo. Yugo's probably also considered terminated in their eyes. Their obsession with the interpersonal relationships of people they don't know is beyond their own computer screen is deeply unhealthy. Why is it not enough that the people are involved are happy? Exactly. Just let them be happy. Don't do what this guy does. Don't overly analyze. Don't overly anything. Yes, you have people like me who are making videos every single day, but this is just me being a objective observer as much as objective as I can be observer of everything that's going on. It really doesn't affect my life. I had covered the Luca incident in the past and it was... Uh, you know, it was crazy the whole way everything happened. Um, it's pretty much, you know, them not doing their own work uh, as a part of largely Sanji stuff and not wanting to pay in certain situations uh, the work that was being done. But you always should pay the people that you try to uh, at least look at and at least commission because that's just fair to the artist. That's fair to everybody involved. And Lucas still is going to have a platform, of course, because he has a large following. Uh, and the things that he did aren't entirely horrible but the fact is that um there was a bit of manipulation going on there was a bit of you know the bad things that he did it wasn't like he specifically hurt someone with the intention of hurting someone but still um he hasn't taken responsibility for the things he did the main issue is if he had come out and apologized even on a pl account or something that people knew was pl i think people would be treating this differently but no apology just him continuing his work is it a bad look for somebody, for anybody, uh, that has been caught in the way that he has? So he's not going to be fired yet, of course. He probably never will be due to favoritism because he's part of the Luxian boys, of course. Uh, did he actually? That's nuts. Yeah, literally insane. And I remember that's what he said. And that's kind of makes him a bit of like a sex pest for a bit. And that is not a good thing to be accused of. That is not a good thing to even have happen. Um, the fact that, you know, maybe he did apologize to Raziel at some point, but he continued to act the same way that he had in the sense of the ignoring somebody, the um, saying you're going to play with them and then, you know, just ignoring them, going somewhere else and doing all this kind of stuff and uh, getting work done by somebody, not giving them credit when, where credit was due. All that type of stuff leads to a bunch of bad juju, a bunch of, a bunch of bad PR that you can't fix unless you actually apologize. He also got caught in the act by his mom. Yes, he did. He got caught in the act by his mom. So those type of things are um, the reason why he's going to keep getting bad publicity, why this is not going to go away. Because also, you know, Niji Sanji doesn't give them a chance to ever apologize for the things that they've done. So it he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. But, you know, it's he, he's a professional, or at least he tries to pretend to be a professional, and he should have apologized. That's my main point. Here is an article about any color stocks, the express concern regarding open auditions, the full article in the comments. Why would anyone audition to become a Nidhi Sanji EN VTuber? Uh, they're saying, and the fall down the rabbit hole, the one thing I've noticed due to covering and editing news is that any color doesn't seem to be the best or most supportive place to be, which is why upon seeing the recent advertisement about Nidhi Sanji's English's regular editions, one that I covered myself, for VTubers being perpetually open, I can't help but wonder who would ignore the warning signs and try to join up, especially the warning signs that we know now. If anything, I'm almost tempted to suggest recent actions fall under the love bombing abuse tactic. A lot of Nidhi Sanji English VTubers who should have had 3D debuts or gotten extra opportunities like Rosemi Lovelock finally got one, and only after the situation happened. The AR Live finally happened in April 9th of 2024. There were also no graduations since Kyo Kaneko's February 17th, 2024 graduation. I feel it almost comes across a bit as a bit desperate, like any colors attempting to make people outside the company forget by making the performance happen, while also trying to install a false sense of security in people still there by giving them things like 3D or a chance to perform. Though honestly, I feel like the now open auditions to become Nidhi Sanji English VTuber may even feel like another part of this unsettling puzzle. If you're doing well, you don't need to constantly keep searching for new applicants. Also, it makes me wonder if we see more graduations, uh, if we're going to see more graduations. Yes, debuting with an established company like any color and joining Nidhi Sanji English would mean a chance to more easily build an audience. It could mean working alongside other people to collaborate and draw more attention to yourself. But I feel like people shouldn't ignore the warning signs. Look at how the company treated people who fell from favor, like Zion Lanza and Selen Tatsuki. It, is, it was bad the way that they were treated, of course. It was very bad. And this person is right in that whole situation. You know, I think everyone figured out the 3D debuts in Air Live were just for profits. But the article brings up a great point about love bombing. Uh, maybe someone at Niji is actually canny and thought up some uh, 
like cunning and thought someone releasing all this content to pressure the talents into staying. If they can make talents feel appreciated just long enough for the drama to pass over, then a far better ch chance as many people stay uh, on with the company instead of being put in the graduation queue. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to prevent graduation queue. Honestly, terrifying. You'd also think they would try to include the newer generations, Chris and TTT, in their promos, promos and everything. Uh, but instead, they've been focusing more on the other ways, most of who celebrated their Waves anniversary and have probably renewed the contracts before Selene's termination. Only Extremely Desperate uh, will join at this point, their toxic brand or addition hoping to become a leaker. I would be surprised if it isn't canned. At least Brave Group or Vishojo will get you a 3D model that doesn't look like it came from a PS1 game. This article sounds very similar to the sentiments stated here. I'm curious if the author was lurking here. Could be a case of vertical thinking. But interesting to see some of the same points made here echoed in a more professional pl platform like the article. At the very least, the majority of Western, West North America, Canada, Europe will think twice into applying. Uh, yeah, everyone's thinking twice. I don't apply to uh, Nidhi Sanji in any serious form. I may have done it in the past as a troll. I'm most likely blacklisted by Nidhi Sanji at this point because of the trolls I've done in the past. So I understand that. But um I don't think anyone's going to seriously be doing that unless they're from a country where maybe the pay isn't so well, like, you know, or maybe they're suffering from needing some income, which is fully understandable. I am not mocking those people at all, because when you need to make bread, you need to make bread. When you need to pay your bills, you need to pay your bills in any way that you can pay it. Even if you have to lower your head a little bit it is respectable because you are paying bills. You are getting things done. You're doing what needs to be done to feed your feed yourself and feed your family. This news as someone who follows VTubers and someone who follows uh, Hollow Live a bit is a bit worrying because it's not a, a fun thing to happen. But uh, differences in treatment uh, in certain good companies and friends. I hope she's safe. Uh, Nene over, you know. Did, did this on sleeping meds. Basically, she ended up taking too many of them. She's following her retired sister's steps, mistook her sleeping aids for candy and ate a jar's worth. Woke up in the ER. Nene, how? Nene's certainly doing well for someone who nearly crossed the river sticks. Not today, Mori. Not today. This, you know, people making fun of the situation, people trying to make light of the situation. They're not hating her per se. They're just saying, how the heck did this happen? You know, how did someone mistake the sleeping stuff for candy? Unless she ended up getting like uh, meds that were um, that were brightly colored or meds that were, uh, you know, gummy form, that type of thing. Who saved Nene this time? Was it Poka? Uh, Manichan, her manager, messaged Mamachi, which is basically Nenichi's mom, because she couldn't get in touch with Nene. She uh, knows that when you don't, when you can't get in touch, you've talked to family and family will go see because family ha usually has, uh, in, in the case of Nene's mom, has the key to her apartment, can get in if necessary for emergency purposes. <clears throat> Mama went to go check. And then his mom went to go check up on her and found her apparently passed out. So they called, you know, to get her into the hospital. Uh, when she woke up in the hospital bed, her entire family and manager was there. Uh, Manachan did well. Probably knows that Nene is someone you keep an eye on too. Other talents can have more lax hands of an approach, but not her. Because basically, a lot of talents are more hands-off, like Mori, Mori Calliope, other people like that. But I'm pretty sure after like a day or two of no contact, uh, or like, you know, too long of no contact, people are going to be worried. And manager probably knew Nene is a bit of a clumsy person. We all know, like anyone who knows Nene knows that Nene is a bit of a, clu uh, you know, a clumsy person, a klutz, if you will. And in this case, that being a klutz and people knowing that helped her save, save her from uh, a bad situation. I hope she recovers from this attempt or not. That's a scary situation to be in. I don't think it was an attempt. It just, she just casually mentioned it. Uh, Hollow Live, a place where near-death experiences are being shrugged, as, especially by a certain detective. You know, things like this. Um... People asking, yeah, she's okay and she's fine. She recovered. She wouldn't have been doing that stream otherwise if she wasn't. So she did a stream afterwards. A lot of people were obviously shocked when she just casually mentioned it. She did mention that this happened. So that was on Reddit. That was on, on 4chan. But it was on 4chan because she mentioned it herself. She herself went on stream and mentioned, hey, guys, this is what happened to me today. This is why I couldn't stream at this certain time. Because, you know, I was in the hospital because I took too much of this. I thought it was candy and it went, you know, it went too far. So I don't think it was an attempt. I don't think it was an attempt. I think she just casually mentioned it. Um, Caddy, their coworker, and she can put a good word for death sensei. Holy crap. Hope she has a quick recovery and label those bottles. Not just labeling, it also has to be physically different than others to require a lot more effort to open. Nene mistook them for candy because she both puts both pills and her candies in similar fancy jars. Oh no. So that's what happened. It was a similar fancy jar. You don't do that. I always, always, I have medication as well, and I always leave it in medical bottles, in the bottles that are obviously for medicine and obviously marked as the medicine that they are. Uh, 
I don't go for any kind of aesthetic. I don't go for anything like that. So I just keep it exactly where they are and exactly marked as what they are. So I know what I'm taking and I know the dosage that I'm taking. I don't ever want to have a situation like this where I mistake it for something else. To report on her condition, Nen is having a content warning collab with Polka. Miko and Fubuki in a bit. So she's fine now. That was about five hours ago. So that's already that already happened. She can take care of animals, but can't take care of herself. Nenichi, don't give heart attack to your army of husbands. Poor Nenna, some time ago, she was seriously in a dark place and she slowly recovered. Now risking her life for mislabeling would have been so unfair after everything she overcame. I want to make a chubby emu joke here, but thought against it because she can come out as, as sensitive to Nenna and her closest associates. But sh should it should be said here is take care of yourselves and be well. That's one very important thing to be saying. I know she comes off as ditzy, but that's really effing ditzy of her. She's glad she's okay. Exactly. It's a really ditzy thing for her to do. Uh, she probably is no longer going to be doing it. I hope she's no longer going to be doing something like that because it could happen again. The fact that it happened once means that it can happen again. So I, I would think just putting it back in the medicine bottles or a bottle that specifically, okay, this different looking one is absolutely going to be medicine 100% of the time. This person here gave himself up to any color, basically uh, was apprehended. They said apprehended, but pretty much Kurosanji didn't do anything. Instead, the man silently surrendered. So they surrendered themselves to Nidhi Sanji for uh, harassing uh, Axia Krone, uh, a liver with them. It must have been an awkward conversation. I believe one of your livers. Ah, so applying for manager position. <laughs> People are going to be dogging on this for the whole time. The site is JP, so I can't read it again, but think it's rare. W by the wording is strange. Is Niji the one actively hunting the guy or the guy surrendered? According to Chris, the hollow pro simp, the perpetrator was in his late 30s man who had an abusive family and decided to vent his frustration over ex Niji liver Axia Krone. So it's an ex liver By making 100 troll comments in a row within 10 minutes and 2,000 troll posts. That's a lot of posts. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of a lot of time you're spending, sir. A lot of time. And when Axia announces his graduation, the perpetrator felt regret that he's contemplating about blanking. Uh, eventually, he decided to take the punishment from any color and made an interview saying the words can actually hurt people. I don't know, man. That sounds a fairy tale to be believable. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. If only these sisters learn from that perpetrator's example. I mean, yes, you can make mistakes. Like this perpetrator made a mistake. They made a big mistake, a huge mistake of trolling somebody so hard that it may have led to uh, thinking of, you know, that type of bad stuff. And um, that is not something that you ever want to do. That is not something that you ever want to bring someone to that to do that. I've been in that dark place. I've been in that dark place a lot of times. Um, even recently, I've been in that dark place. Those ideations are not something that I wish on anybody. Those ideations are not something that I wish on my worst enemy because it is a dark place I do not want anyone to be in. It is hell on earth. It feels like hell on earth. So this is good PR for Nidhi Sanji because it's not true. He wasn't harassed. He left because he was uncomfortable with how parasocial fans his fans were. Literally made up a story for brownie points. Guy harasses talent. Talent eventually graduates. Any color uses J Japan's defamation laws to release personal information. Any color files lawsuits. Harasser negotiates settlement with any color because he'd be toast if he went to court. Harasser does interview with Japanese news site uh, looking into defamation over the internet. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole situation. I'm glad that the harasser has uh, taken a plea deal, has made sure that they are not going to be doing it again, has decided, you know, this was never a good idea, making an interview to try to dissuade other people from doing the same thing. It's good. It's a good time. It's a good thing. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.